Now you'll have seen in recent videos, especially the one of my media wall, that I was using an airless paint sprayer and loads of you asked what machine I've been using. So that machine was one of these, a Wagner 250R paint sprayer. Now I know what you're thinking, this one looks new. Well that's because the machine I was using was a borrowed machine and I liked it so much that I decided to go to Wagner and say would you send me one? So they've sent me this brand new unit and I've decided to share with you how I use one of these to paint rooms to get the best finish possible. I'll be showing you how to set this up, how to use it, how to clean it out and some of the pros and cons and pitfalls of using an airless paint sprayer to spray rooms like this. So as you can see I've got another big room to do here on my renovation and this room has got a newly plastered ceiling and wall over there and a little bit above the window but where I took the coving down and stuff like that there's also some fresh plaster over there. So what I need to do first is mist coat pretty much this whole room because there's only a couple of walls that actually have emulsion already on them. So I'm going to whiz over this with a mist coat and if you want to know a bit more about mist coating I'll put a link at the end of this video so that you can head over to my mist coat and guide and see how I do that. So before we set up our machine the first thing you need to know about spraying emulsion on rooms or even if you're buying one of these to do fences and things like that the first step of the process is to mask up and protect anything that you don't want to get paint on. Now if you don't mask up or mask up properly these can get quite messy. So I'll mask up all the switches and sockets first. I'd recommend what you do is take the screws out of the faceplate of your switches or sockets, pull them forward and then use some frog tape or any low tack masking tape to just mask around the socket. Now I know what you're thinking, all this masking takes time and that's going to eat into the time on the job. But when you see how quick you can paint with one of these machines, you'll see that you gain that time back and more when you actually start spraying. So I'm now going to move on to masking up the window. Whilst there's not a huge amount of overspray with these, as long as you use the right nozzle, there will always be some. So we need to make sure windows are masked up properly too. So you can see I've completely bagged the window. There's no way any paint can get all over that because that's the last thing we need. We don't want loads of clearing up afterwards. If we spend the time masking up properly, we shouldn't really get any. And what I'm going to do next is clear the room because we don't want anything on the floors. If you have anything on the floor, what you'll find is when you're walking along spraying or especially if you're spraying the ceiling, you're going to end up falling over the stuff that's on the floor. So anything you don't want to either fall over or get covered in paint, make sure you move that out of the room. Right, so we're going to get our paint ready and prime the machine now, ready to start painting. There's a couple of other things you need at this stage. The first thing is a waste bucket. And you're probably wondering why I've got a bin liner in there. That is because if we need to spray any waste paint, if we do that into a plain bucket like this, it'll actually just spray back in our face and having the bin liner in there just takes a bit of the velocity out of that. So I found out the hard way with that one. This bucket here I'm now going to fill with water, that's just to have some fresh water nearby in case we need some and also because I'm mist coating I need to mix a little bit of water in my white emulsion. Right, so that's our paint mixed. Now plug the machine in. Um, we don't need to worry about having this too close to where we work because the machine comes with a very long hose which will reach all the way throughout this room. So we could base this in the next room if we wanted to and actually have it completely out of the way. So I'll talk you through how to prime the machine now. So I'll be absolutely honest with you, the first time I used one of these I didn't read the instructions and I struggled to prime it because I skipped past all of that. So let me show you how to prime this now. First thing you need to do is make sure this little black lever valve here is in the vertical position and not sideways. It can be up or down but it must be in the vertical position. Make sure the paint pickup hose is in your tub of paint and then just press the little red priming button. Turn the dial on the unit to number one and then you'll see paint will start to flow through the priming tube. Once you've got a steady flow, you'll know it's primed. Turn the green spraying nozzle so that it's facing backwards towards the handle. Now pull the trigger and you should have a flow of paint at good pressure. Turn the black lever to the horizontal position and then switch the machine to pressure number four, which is perfect for spraying. 
the machine's now primed and we're ready to spray. So what I'll do now is get my PPE on and then I will show you how to spray some walls and get the best finish. So the machine's all set up and we're now going to start painting. But before we do that, we need to think a little bit about PPE because we don't really want to be breathing loads of paint in. So the first thing we need is a mask of some description and I would recommend, especially if you're doing ceilings, I would recommend a pair of safety goggles so that you don't get paint in your eyes. Some of that paint will inevitably be airborne and it will drop down very slowly in a very fine mist and go all in your eyes if you don't have a pair of safety glasses. You could wear gloves and you could wear air defenders. The machine's not particularly loud, but it can get a bit annoying after a little while. I'm not gonna wear those because I'm talking to camera. The final piece of PPE is a protective suit like this. I usually wear these in lofts and things like that to keep the fiberglass off me. I have since started wearing one when I'm spraying and it keeps all the spray paint off you as well. So one of these little protective suits is really handy. So don your PPE and then we're ready to fire up the machine. So I'm going to start with the ceiling. It's bare plaster, so it's going to suck dry really, really quickly. Uh, what I want to do first is just run all the way around the edges, overlapping halfway between the wall and the ceiling. Once I've got the edges done all the way around, we'll focus on the body of the ceiling. Let's go. To reduce the chance of runs in the paint, always keep the gun moving when you're spraying and make sure you hold it around 12 inches from the surface. Right, so that's the edges done. Now I'm going to try the extension out. I've never used one of these before, so we're trying this for the first time together. So same as before, I'll keep the nozzle probably around 12 inches from the surface and I'll walk back and forth and paint the ceiling. And remember to keep that gun moving at all times. So as you're going back and forth, make sure you're overlapping around halfway onto your previous line, just kind of like you would a roller really. Make sure that you're getting that nice smooth finish as you go. Right, let's get the rest of this seal and painted. It's a bit misty in it. So that's it, that's the seal and painted. Even with talking to camera, that's like five minutes. So I've never painted ceilings as quick as I can with this, especially with the extension on it. Right, let's move on to the walls. So I'll put the normal nozzle back on now, switch that round to the vertical position so that we can work up and down the wall just like you would with a roller, starting with the corners just like before. Remember, keep that gun moving as you go. If you're gonna bunch up, it's gonna be more likely happening in the corners as you sort of move around in those more intricate positions. Don't tip the gun over as well or twist your hand. Try to keep square onto the wall. Keep that gun moving. You can see I tipped my hand a little bit there. What that'll do is that'll bunch paint up at the bottom of where the, the spray pattern is and it'll be thinner at the top. So even though I've done hours with this thing, you still forget. Right, so, whew, it's getting hot in there in this suit. Um, that is that wall done, probably took a couple of minutes. I think I could probably paint this whole room in no more than 10 minutes with, you know, per coat with this machine. So I'll whip round, I'll do the rest of this coat. I'll then uh, let it dry, I'll go have some lunch, I'll come back, we'll put the second coat on, I'll show you the finish because I think you'll find it superior to a roller. Then what we'll do, we'll clean the machine out, I'll show you how to do all that, it's a bit of a rigmarole. And then I'll tell you a few pros and cons about the machine because there are a few, it's not all sunshine and roses. 
The same technique applies with the second coup as it does the first. And when you're using a sprayer, you'll often find that it will cover in two coats really easily because of how evenly the paint is being applied. So the camera doesn't really pick this up very well, which is annoying. But I'll take you to the room next door, which I sprayed using one of those sprayers about a month ago. If we take a look at how smooth the finish on the paint is, let me bring you in a little bit closer. Now I don't know whether the camera picks up how smooth the finish is, but it doesn't have that stipply effect that a roller gives you. So hopefully you can see A, how quick the machine is at painting, and B, the finish is really, really good as well. And believe it or not, you can cut in with it as well. A bit like this little feature wall here that I did, all you have to do is mask off around the area. Again, it takes time, but you can make feature walls or paint other colors with the machine as long as you mask off properly. So that leaves us one last thing to do, clean out the machine. But before we do that, if you guys aren't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on all the great videos I've got to come. And if the video has been useful, hit like because that helps the video reach and help more people like you on YouTube. So clean up. First thing, bring the machine outside and plug it back in. And you're going to want lots of fresh water for this. So I've got a hose pipe and a few buckets at the ready as well. To be honest, clean up of the machine is probably the most important factor if you want to keep the machine in good working order. So first thing you want to do, plug the machine in and then we'll take the pickup from our paint and put it into some water. Now we're going to end up doing this lots of times. Of course it makes the water really white straight away as you can see and we're going to need to run fresh water through this until it's pretty much clear. And just like we did before we will prime the sprayer and then just start flushing it through with clean water. Of course at the start you're going to get more paint come through. It's now starting to bring through some water but you can see that's mostly emulsion in the bottom there so you could argue it's quite wasteful. One thing I did find is if you turn the nozzle the other way around like you would when you're priming you don't get a spray pattern so it's easier to spray onto the side of the bucket and it doesn't splash back at you so much. What I'll do now is just take the filter off the end give everything a good scrub and you can see we're starting to get some of that emulsion off there. Regular water changes help as well really important to remember to run lots of fresh water through the priming hose as well because if paint hardens inside the priming hose it's going to make the machine really hard to prime in the future. Now the water's coming out pretty clear now so what I like to do now is actually take the hoses off the bottom. So what I'll do now is just use my hose and maybe a little brush as well just to make sure all of the paint is out of there. Now I like to use some trade wipes like this just to give the exterior of the uh, sprayer a bit of a clean up. I mean it's never going to be a showroom piece but if you want to keep it looking somewhat presentable just give it a wipe down afterward. So we'll move on to cleaning out the spray gun. That's the bit that probably gets the most dirty. Take off the nozzle. I spray off any excess paint just with a hose and then I grab a little paintbrush and some water and just make sure I get any stubborn bits of paint out of all the little nooks and crannies. So you take the nozzle out, make sure you give that a good clean. It's had clean water sprayed through it so we know that it shouldn't block. There is one more component that we need to clean in the gun itself and that is the filter inside here. I like to use a couple of adjustable spanners just to loosen the gun from the hose and you'll then be able to remove it completely. Just use your paintbrush to take out any paint in the end there and you can then use a couple of spanners just to remove the housing from the filter. Once you remove the housing you're going to find the filter inside and you'll notice that even after just one use there's quite a bit of paint built up on that filter. Now I'm just going to use my paintbrush just to clean off all that old paint and debris from the filter and then I'll use a hose and just clean up the gun itself. And then we will reassemble everything and run one last lot of fresh water through it. Now we know everything's completely clean when the purge is running clear and the spray is running clear as well. 
So hopefully that gives you some idea of how much is involved in cleaning out one of these airless sprayers. Now I guess that probably brings us on to the question that you're wondering. Would I, or should you, buy one of these airless sprayers, in particular the Wagner 250R? Well the answer to that is yes, no, maybe, and the reason for that is it depends really on what you need one for. If you're doing a lot of big rooms or you're working on a renovation like I am, or maybe you're doing lots of fences the whole length of your garden, in that case I would say definitely I would not hesitate to buy one of these because they're quick, the finish is great and they're really good fun to use. But they're not perfect and the main flaw with them is that they take a long time to prepare and they take a long time to clean out. And that means that they're only really any good if you've got quite a bit of painting to do. There's no point trying to paint a small room or just one wall or something like that because it's gonna take you just as much time to prepare to use one of these as it is to actually paint the room. But this is kind of true with all airless sprayers unless you go for some of the cheaper ones where the paint actually goes into a hopper underneath the gun. But the professional level sprayers like this one, definitely you need to be doing enough painting to warrant having one. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you have, check out this one because there's loads more to learn. And if you wanna see this in use over on my renovation, check out this video here. And I'll see you guys in the next one.